The Core Manager provides a variety of management options for your core, which of course can only be configured when your PC is connected to that core on your network. You can access the Core Manager either from the Tools menu and selecting Show Core Manager, or you can click directly on the name of your core that's displayed in the top toolbar when your design is running. You could also simply enter the IP address of your core into any web browser. If your web browser gives you a security warning like this, don't worry about it. Since your core is a trusted device on your local network, your connection is secure, even if your browser doesn't recognize it. We highly recommend you add the HTTPS designation to your browser when you connect. For more information on networking security considerations with your core, you can check out our videos in our Reflect Enterprise Manager training course. However you connect to the core manager, you'll come to this, the main dashboard. You can navigate different sections on the left, which you can also collapse down to smaller icons if you're already comfortable navigating them. Let's look at each section going from top to bottom. The status section gives a general overview of your system, including basic information on your core and the current status of every peripheral in your design. For larger designs, you may want to use the inventory filtering options so that you can find specific types or models of devices. If any of your devices shows a fault in its status, then you probably want to investigate by going to the next tab, the event log. The event log is a list of notable events that have taken place during the uptime of your running design. Normal events are noted in green, warning events are noted in amber, and error events are noted in red. Once again, you can filter this log to find events with a specific severity, or a particular category, such as paging activity, or telephony connections, or filter for activity from specific devices. You could also constrict your log report by specific dates, or search for a specific word or phrase. Or, if you want to clear out your log, simply press the Clear Log button. Certain events in a log will repeat. For instance, if a device's status drops from OK, then an error message will log upon the first problem, and then repeat again in 10 minutes, then 6 hours, and then every 12 hours thereafter until the problem is corrected. The log will also specify how long the problem has persisted. There are certain components that allow you to publish custom messages to the event log based on your design's activity, which makes this a useful troubleshooting tool to keep track of your entire system's performance. Core Manager will store up to 5,000 events or 30 days worth of activity, whichever one comes first. After this, the oldest events will be deleted in batches of 1,000 events at a time, so technically it could store up to 6,000 events before this deletion. If you're using Enterprise Manager, its event log follows the same logic, except the limits are 30,000 events and 6 months. Next, let's look through the various sections of the Core Management category. In Network Settings, you get access to the same information for your core that you found in the configurator for your other QSIS peripherals, namely your core's name, its IP addresses and net masks for each of its LAN ports, and an ID button. To change this information, simply press the Edit button, make your adjustments, and then press Save. Like we mentioned in the configurator, naming your device and configuring its IP address is one of the first steps to getting your system operational. At the bottom, you'll also see settings for DNS. If you're connecting your core to the internet on one of your LAN ports, be sure to get your DNS and gateway settings from your IT administrator to enable that access. The date and time settings speak for themselves. You can set the core's date and time, as well as determine which time zone it should use, which is useful if you're commissioning a system for a region different than the one that you're in. If you enable time synchronization, that will allow the core to get its time from a network time protocol server of your choice. In the licensing section, you can see a list of all QSIS software feature licenses that have been installed on your core, as well as an activation area to install new licenses. If you need a scripting engine license or a UCI deployment license, for instance, you'll need your entitlement ID or license file to activate these. You can learn more about license activation in a separate video. Let's take a quick break there and come back whenever you're ready.